and I went up to dad after the meet and I'm, I wasn't crying or anything, but I was pissed. And I was like, why do I have to be the worst winder? And he was oh, like, Oh man. no. Yeah. <laughs> And, but what he told me was something that was really, really important. He goes, you know what you have to do. And I made an Instagram post about this. He said, you got to be patient with me and be patient with pole vaulting. gentlemen it is what it is um welcome to another episode of the one more jump podcast uh with jake and josh winder uh today we have our youngest brother luke winder on the podcast a uh, little bit about him uh he has a personal best in the pole vault of five meters 60 which is 18 feet four and a half inches um he is a two-time illinois state champion former illinois state record holder this one's crazy seven-time ncaa division three uh pole vaulting champion um and three-time usatf national qualifier let's give it up for luke why <laughs> appreciate right. it for having yeah. me yeah no problem that was really hard for me to do because i am so cold right now i just got out of an ice cold shower on purpose in the morning sending it full send all the way into the ice cold shower no so way cold I can that, do that my my fingertips hurt and i had to keep my fingertips out of the cold water i don't know why so 90 percent of people are wondering why you did that uh what's the point well i've wondered the point too because i i <laughs> no I, I i will do i'll do ice baths all day long i'll yeah. do sauna I'll go to the extremes of, of hot and cold, but right, right. starting my day off with the cold showers, I've tried. I, I think I know why do he it. does it. There's because when we, were, when we were in yeah. Chula Vista, Jake and I every day drove over to the Pacific and just got right in and it was like 55, 60 degree water. And he like, said yeah, it was too... 60. Okay, yeah. And he would... He said it was to kind of like mellow out his body and just bring it back to neutral. I don't know if that's a thing. But. No, no, that's not the no. neutral. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like neutralize. <coughs> Sorry, um, oh, man. recalibrate. I, it, that's, that's what I mean. Yeah. Recalibrate. Are you yeah. sick or are you just no. got a dry, <laughs> a dry throat? I choked yeah. on my spit. Now's not a good time to be coughing. <laughs> I choked on my, <laughs> on my spit a little bit there. All right. So there's three reasons. Okay. Number one reason is, um, they're not in any specific order. Number one, that's a sump pump. Uh, <laughs> number one reason is I really don't want to do it. Every single day I wake up, I'm like, today i think i'm just gonna do a hot shower today. I'm just gonna do a hot shower. And then I start to get in the shower and i'm about to turn the water on and i'm like am i really could be in a wuss going to <laughs> you know wuss out of this here and and then i just mentally have to bring myself to do something i really don't want to do first thing in the morning just like kind of establishing control over mm -hmm. my day i don't know if that makes any sense then that makes the sense. second the second reason this water is, is cold and i am in control <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can you can learn a lot by getting in ice cold water about yourself that's for sure yeah yeah um and then the second reason is that it, ad, it activates uh brown adipose tissue uh mm. bat and uh, that's like congregated along your collarbones and your in the back of your neck and your shoulders. And that um, if that's activated, it's like really dense with mitochondria and you you it recruits white fat, which is like the fat around your stomach. It recruits white fat to be burnt as fuel to keep you warm. Interesting. Which is, 
pretty cool. Yeah, there's some cool studies out there about that. And then the last one is the immune piece because you are anytime that you put your body under an extreme amount of stress, even if, if it's lifting or if it's if it's extreme cold or extreme heat, um, you have to have, a, you know, a hormetic response to that. That's what they call it. And it's called hormesis. And you, your Easy. body just, your, your <laughs> body, your body gets, um, you know, you, you have to have that response. And so the more that you ask your body to kind of respond to these light loads of extreme stuff, then your body, you know, develops better immunity and things like that. Cause you have immune response. People always sure. like, if you go out in the cold, you're going to get sick. You know, you, it, the cold doesn't make you sick. It's just, if you are have a, like a prolonged stint out in the cold and you know, then, and you have a weak immune, a weak yeah. immune system, then you can't yeah. really handle it. I think it's the same thing with getting outside, man, with this, uh, you know, the, the quarantine situation or the stay at home thing, like you, you got to be careful about going outside and exposing yourself, you know, too closely to others and, and such. But I feel like people should be getting in their backyards. They should do what I do. I go out and water my lawn like six times a day <laughs> to get some yeah. fresh air. Cause I'm in this, this, you know, unfinished guest room in our basement. And if you sit down here too long, man, the quality of air, you know, you know, no matter how good you're, HVAC system is it's not circulating and you're not getting fresh air. Yeah. yeah I think you got to get out every day. I tell that to Amber too, cause she works from home and is just every day, like nine to five, basically on her laptop at a desk. But then yeah. after Open that, up those windows don't... behind you. I mean, those are good. I know those are we nice. Got nice little, she gets a little bit of vitamin D, but um, I keep telling her, I'm like, man, we just need to go for a long walk and just, yeah hang out outside and get some vitamin D because I, I was actually talking to a couple athletes. I was like, man, I never realized the effect of vitamin D until I've been cooped up inside for like yeah. when, when Amber came back from Barcelona, we had to have that two week quarantine. And I was like, my mood was so low because yeah. I was not outside. I wasn't, didn't have any sun. And then the moment that I was able to step outside, I was like, there's a reason person. that, I think that you get like intrinsically like excited about when it's going to be a sunny day. Like we're not from yeah. Colorado or Lake Tahoe or California or all of these places where it's like, Oh my gosh, it's like 300 days of sunshine. We're from man, Midwest, just <laughs> this, where it's, if it's, if it's gray and cloudy, it's, it's like, like 35 degrees and raining right now. Outside. Yeah, <laughs> which is the normal. I've got a Another tiny one. bit of sunshine coming through my window, and I'm like, right. man, it's gonna be a really, really nice day. Yeah, you it's know what? hilarious though because it's April 25th, which would be I don't really know what media would be around Drake relays or something maybe. Yeah, and it's 35 degrees and raining, which is just like it is at Drake relays every year. <laughs> yeah, that's Drake relays in a nutshell, right there. Yeah, it is uh, rain and cold and. Uh, a tailwind in warmups and a headwind during the competition. <laughs> I, I love it though. I love it. Drake has always been like my favorite. Meet. Yeah. It is. I told yeah, that to dad, favorites. like dad, I think always wondered why I loved it so much, but it's part of the, just sucking it up and going out there and doing it. And like knowing that some of the guys might be able to, but some of the guys won't, you know, for sure. Yeah. And I'm another thing, hopefully be one of those guys that can like props to, who the event coordinators and things like that who put on and the marketers you know who who put on drake relays you know to have such a successful meet in the midwest in april like yeah. Yeah. that must I, I can't think of any other big track meet or track event in the midwest during the month of april do you, like, do you remember i can't yeah. think of another big track event in the midwest do you remember the elite That's competition <laughs> at Drake? I think you were in the elite section of Drake, uh, Jake, when it was a literally like a, um, like a 20, 25 mile an hour headwind, no exaggeration, maybe even more. And it was Bjorn Otto. Bjorn Otto and Renault. And he made 570 into a 30 mile an hour headwind. That was pretty yeah. savage. That, moment, I still right have there. that video and he popped up and celebrated 
more than I'd really seen him celebrate because he knew that that jump was comparable to like a six meter jump with a, with no wind or a tailwind. It was insane. Do you remember what year that was? was I don't know, but I, I should try to find 13. I think I can find that clip and maybe throw it up on the gram a little bit later. (laughs) Um, I might have to. I might have to do some digging. I, I actually dusted off a whole bunch of external hard drives, and I'm finding some gems of videos mm-hmm. on on those. I actually it's, found an external hard drive that goes all the way back to 2011 with lots of jumps and video and candid stuff on it. So it's um, it'll, it'll be fun kind of diving into that. But I wanted to ask you, Luke, like we're all talking about sitting inside all day and possibly getting outside a little bit and you know with the season basically being completely canceled and summer being canceled like what what do you do like what does your day look like um and explain a little bit about what you do professionally too because i know that you're involved in north central college etc yeah so i basically so i i work at north central as a graduate assistant Um, I'm getting my master's degree there and I also coach the pole vaulters. Um, So we'll have team meetings like the full track team. will have team meetings probably once a week. I'm recruiting kids four or five days a week um, just by texting or calling or email, having recruiting meetings and stuff like that. Um, I'm also doing as much as I can as far as personal training, sending, you know, workouts to, to high schoolers that I had worked with throughout the season um, and all of that. Um, but I've been, you know, get, being cooped up. I don't like doing that. I, we've always, you know, we were raised as people who, if we're inside too long, they, our parents kick us out pretty much, you know, and we just, they like to have us spend as much time in our cul-de-sac playing kickball as we can or skateboarding or whatever much, it is. As much time away from them as possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as much time away from them as humanly possible. That's a so much so that dad just put up two PVC pipes and, and uh, bungee across in our backyard. So we'd just hang out there for a little bit too. But for sure. For sure I basically man. have been trying to get, um, you know, I work out six days a week, whether it's running. I have I, my workout routines have kind of been like three mile run a couple of days a week. Um, I have two full body lifting days a week and then interval days, two days a week where I'm running like two hundreds or one hundreds, but I've been trying to, you know, that's six days a week that I'm really trying to get out and actually go do something outside though. You know, like I saw Jake yesterday at the club, I was doing some lifting and I'm trying to occupy my time and burn off some steam too. Just like, because when you're cooped up, you just have so much energy. It's for sure trying to get to the weight room and throw some weights around and just, I was telling Jake, I was like, there's nothing better than putting on your favorite music and just getting down with some weights, you know, hundred percent. Well, you, you actually ventured outside probably your comfort zone slightly just to change things up with these, uh, little three mile runs that you're doing as well. I know that you've got the Des Plaines river about a mile and a half away and you're scoping out some fishing spots, but, um, <laughs> to killing two birds with one stone there but is that was that something that was suggested by dad um or were you guys just kind of came to the consensus like hey let's just change it up we've got some time let's get the legs moving a little bit it was a little bit of both actually it was i had to kind of talk to dad and talk to you guys and ask for advice about what i what you all think i should be doing during this time just because there's really nothing to be you know, working towards, like you said, like the best motivator is having a competition or having something like that to, um, for sure, you know, compete for and keep trying to jump in practice. But I talked to dad and I talked to you guys and you guys were basically like, you should just either take a little time to do whatever you want or just train through and not worry about vaulting. And that's kind of what I've been doing is I've been doing a little bit of both of that been popping some kick flips when I can. And, uh, you know, playing the drums. I've also been, like you said, running some distance every once in a while, just because dad talked to me and was like, you know, whenever I was growing up in vaulting, obviously there wasn't as much knowledge about how to train for vaulting, but he felt like he just had to outlast his competition, you know, have a little bit more endurance than his competition throughout and throughout a competition. And, you know, take one more jump than everybody else. One more jump podcast, throw it out there. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, you see Renault sometimes like riding uh, on his bike on Instagram yeah, and, and other sure. people just jogging around and stuff. Yeah, like I that. think that there's a misconception as far as that stuff goes that it's going to take away from you. Right. And there definitely is an extent to where I'm not going to go and run six mile runs. I'm not going to go any further than three miles personally. Um, but I went out my first time and started running my three miles and I texted Josh and I was like, dude, my legs are giving out. Like it wasn't even my heart rate and stuff like that. It was like my legs felt so weak while I was running. Muscle fibers. Um, And I was like, that's probably not a good thing. You know, like I should be able to go and run three miles and be fine if I'm a fit individual. And I went and started doing that only two days a week. Um, But I feel like, and then making sure that on top of that, I'm still running sprint intervals and running them fast so that I'm not losing that fast twitch. That's what I was going to say, man. I, I mean, I've ventured into a bit of marathon training and stuff and, and I've done, you know, six months of long, medium to long runs with no sprint workouts. And I, I went to a track uh, maybe six, seven weeks ago, right before all this COVID stuff came up and I tried to run an all out 200, which I mean, we used to do 200 meter repeats under 30 seconds frequently, you know, and anyways, I ended up (laughs) clocking a 38 and I was like, Oh my <laughs> goodness. Good. So I was like that, that had to have been a fluke. I was getting warmed up, you know, let's stretch, stretch the legs a little bit, you know, do some flying 50 meters. And then, uh, let's try this again. Round two, 37. I was like that, that is truly what six, seven months of slow twitch muscles do to you, man. Like I yeah, didn't, you don't keep up with it. And another test was, so you guys know, I used to throw backflips off everything whenever I wanted on the ground, round off back handspring, back tuck. I would be able to do all that stuff. The other day I was in my backyard and I was like, I wonder if I can do a backflip. And it was the first time in 10 years that I thought I will break my face on the ground because I don't have that explosiveness anymore. It's not there. And if I want it back, I got to work it back, but it, I guess there isn't a motivation to do that. So let's just keep the slow twitch rolling. You need to not, sorry. You need to not, um, time yourself on those 200s because you know <laughs> if you think about it well then i would have thought older, i was running 28s exactly and that's fine <laughs> what, who cares right you go home and you have the confidence now of you know those yeah. were probably right around they they might have been 27s <laughs> they could have been 28s but they're for sure under 30 i can still run that 49 like, second like, quarter, quarter and then you no good. problem <laughs> You know, you feel good and you're like, this is, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I still got it. As yeah. you get older, you learn like, Hey, you know, you put a little weight on the bar. Ah, let's not add it up. Don't <laughs> add it up. Just, Are these the same size know? plates on each side? <laughs> Whatever. You get home That's and you're fine. like, ah, that was, uh, one of those, uh, that bar is 60. That bar is 60 pounds. <laughs> whenever 60 you get pounds. older, whenever you get older, you start getting, I started getting it whenever I was coaching high school and lifting after practice where you stop caring if you have the, the 45 pound plate or if you have the 25 with two tens on the side, as long as both oh, yeah. sides add up or the five pound plate with the two, two, two and a half on each side, things just shaking around. In high school, I would have been so meticulous about that. Like, no, it's got to be exact. Now I'm like, yeah, this feels all right. Let's just roll have with it. Have you seen some of the training now, though? Like, they're, like, starting to promote, like um, – Offsetting like the weight? Offset, yeah. Like, like you'll see sometimes now, like, in the – some, you know, type – fringy type fitness stuff where you'll, you'll have a guy doing a back squat and it'll have, one like, a 45-pound plate on this side no 45 that'll pull your oblique side. man like you got to be careful yeah. with that I'm, yeah i saw I'm some people doing that with it, bench but the yeah the day. bench too yeah they do it on the on the big lifts or whatever you know bench i don't, I don't know. know who knows but i guess back <laughs> back back to luke we we tend to all kind of get a little uh sidetracked you mentioned uh 
pop and kick flips, playing drums. Um, during this time, are you feeling like you're, you're venturing into things that you have always wanted to, or, um, has, have always kind of dabbled with and follow up question. Do you see yourself maybe seeing the vault in a bit different of a perspective now because you've had the time to be at home with your wife more and pop those kick flips and maybe go fishing and play the drums more. Do you feel like you'll implement some, some more hobby esque things to keep it light? Yeah, I think that that's a big problem is that a lot of people get so, you know, engulfed with just pole vaulting and pole vaulting and pole vaulting that every second of every day you think about it. And I've fallen into that a million times. I know you guys have too. And it's just like, it causes you to legitimately not want to pole vault anymore, but you still want to pole vault. It's a yeah. weird, it's a you weird feel like thing. you have like, to, but you get a little yeah. anxious about it. And you're like, it's you like, I want to, it's like, I want to pole vault, but I want to have fun. And I want to make sure that I'm having fun pole vaulting and I'm doing it because I want to have fun doing it. But I also want to be really good. You know, like I want to PR and I want to do all that stuff, but it's really important to, in, in my, what I've realized is it's really important for me to come down off of the high horse of, I've been to USA's, I've jumped 560, you know, I've been on this pole, I've gripped this high. I've got to, whenever I come, each time when you come back into pole vaulting, you got to start it over. You got to just be able to be like, okay, I'm going to put a bungee at 15, six or 16, like from a short approach and not be embarrassed about the fact that I'm jumping at 15, six or 16, just accept that that's where you're at. And eventually you're going to build back up to it. Cause when, when you're in high school, you know, and the bungee, I I was thinking about this. I was telling dad the other day, I was like, when I was in high school, like I started my practices, like jumping at a 14 foot bungee and my PR was like 17 (laughs) in high school, you know, and I would start my practice at maybe 15 feet and then work my way up to maybe jumping at an 18 foot bungee. Um, But that's a three foot difference, you know, and that's kind of besides the point, but as far as the, you know, and go like doing other activities also when you're in high school, you got gym class, you got like hanging out with your friends after school. I was playing basketball all day, every day. I remember you you used to love dunking the basketball in Mm -hmm. gym class, having a good old time. After class or after school, I go hang out with my buddies. Maybe go pop a couple kick flips. You know, it was just pop a lot more relaxed, and it was a lot more. Luke's got good kick flips. <laughs> he keeps on saying that. Pop a couple kick flips. <laughs> yeah. he's got he's hey, got his I tried got and true. Flip. My very yeah, yeah I good. saw that very old the other day. That was, that was easy. Solid. Those things are so easy, man. I, so you know, it's are you saying good good that you're shove it? your PR right now is, is, so you're saying like your PR right now is probably maybe like around is 15, six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that, uh, <laughs> it's going to take, so like the same mentality that I had in high school and through my beginning years of college before I put a lot of pressure on myself, it was a lot more relaxed back then, you know, like it wasn't yeah, so much thing. about like every meet I have to PR or, actually really that was probably like my thing it was like it would be really cool to pr but if i don't at least i know that this meet is going to add up to something that will eventually be a pr as opposed to you know lately or not lately but the last couple years i felt like i've kind of entered into the meets like hey if i don't pr like it's not a good meet or if i don't jump above 18 feet or get on this pole or grip this high it's not a good meet and all of it's got to be seen as a development into a culmination of all of that stuff being used to eventually PR once or yeah, something. Right. You know what I mean? I always and that's, tell, yeah. that's really helped me with, you know, figuring that stuff out. Once I like post collegially, like I kind of got into this phase of like, you know what? The ultimate practice is a competition like that. And so I started viewing it like that. Like I was, I would be like, okay, today is a practice but I'm at a competition you know like this is my day you know and then some of those practices were or you know competitions um were you know had a lot of really great pole vaulters and big venues with big crowds and I would be like man now this is an even better practice because now I have like extra pressure and and I get to I get to 
practice in this area of having like this extra pressure. And um, if you view it like that, then at the end of the meet, regardless of how, you know, how well you do, you, you're viewing it as, like you said, like a stepping stone and, and you can learn so much more from it. Um, I had a question for you. What, because this kind of has to deal with it. Um, what is the worst part of post-collegiate pole vaulting? I know like there are so many different things out Dang, there. That's like, a hard question. And, and there, and there's people, there's, it all no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's, there's people out there though. There's, there's post collegians, but then there's also kids that are not kids, but um, athletes that are going to be graduating college soon and might want to try this out. Is it money? Is it pressure? Is it, you know, what's um, the worst part? I think that the, I think it's very easy to enter in to post-collegiate vaulting if you do not set your expectations very high and you just try to set small goals. I know that sounds very cliche. Everybody says that, but the, I think the biggest mistake I made is I qualified for my first USA championship and then just assumed that I, that was what I needed to do every year and that it was going to happen every year. It wasn't like this is something I got to work for again every year. It was like this is going to happen. And a good uh, comparison is kind of like when I qualified for my first junior USA's, my junior year of high school, I remember my senior year, my only focus was to qualify again. Like that was like my biggest thing. I was like, Hey, I don't want to, I, I know that the state records on the line and all that, but like my first goal is making sure I get a qualifying mark for that. It wasn't like, Oh, it'll just happen. You know, as the year goes on, it was like, although 16, five, I think it was five meters was pretty low for me at that time. It was like, that's still my number one goal. And and until I do that, then I can focus on the other stuff. But that's the same thing, I think, as far as post-collegiate vaulting. And whenever I think of post-collegiate, I think of, like, jumping to qualify for USAs, hopefully. Um, yeah, for sure. That's the that's the big thing is, like, eight – I mean, it's 18, four and a half is the auto now. And if you're not jumping that, you're not getting in. You know, like, for sure. 23, there were 23 people who jumped 560 the year that I qualified um in wow. and got ninth yeah, place in 2018 i think that's a lot of freaking people yeah and there were probably five of them that were over 19 it's a big misconception um and i dealt with it too is that once you jump you know your big bar and you get to qualify and go to that u.s championships it's like you're not just admitted to the club you don't get like a, a lifetime like no. like a card like a lifetime membership to the elite pole vaulting club yeah no. you have to continually continually perform and you and that's you know for so so what what's your answer what um, it's, uh, so I would say the, probably the pressure of having, for me, it's the pressure of having gone to the USA's and the difficulty of knowing that I have to work for that every time, rather than thinking it's just going to come, you yeah. know, throughout the season, you, can't you gotta continue sleeping. to work you on gotta, this small stuff. You can't, that's, I, just the I, way that we do it, like, I can't just sit there and jump at a bar all the time and like have a and have quote unquote a bunch of fun jumping you know i need to make sure that i'm still working to get better at pole vaulting and not just working at jumping at a higher bungee i need to work on my technique work on my takeoff work on what's going to allow me to get faster and get on bigger poles and stuff like that because that's the stuff that ultimately is going to allow me to jump that height again is getting on that same pole i jumped it before but I haven't been on that pole in a while. So it's like, when I get on that pole, it's like, okay, it's game time. It's pretty sure it's going to, you know, I'm going to be able to jump a good bar. But until you get onto those bigger poles, it's kind of a stretch that you're going to be able to, you know, jump those heights, hopefully. But we've, you never know. we've always, um, and I'm a bad example because I, I didn't really treat post collegiate vaulting as seriously as you two I don't think um I cared a lot about it I wanted to jump well but I was really it was nice to just show up see you guys at a meet and vault with you and hopefully clear you know five meters or something um but whenever you whenever you're vaulting post collegiately and you have a job and a wife and 
need to be bringing in money, need to, you know, pay the bills, but paying the bills isn't just having the money to pay the bills. That is understanding when you need to make payments, buying groceries, staying on top of everything in your life, in your household, in your family. And that some people can handle that and still pole vault, you know, let's just say the 550 plus bar. Um, and some people can't, I couldn't, um, I couldn't, I yeah. never jumped the 550 bar, but I, I wanted to, but I had to realize very quickly, like, okay, I'm teaching full time. I was a teacher before I was in sales. Um, I, I was a teacher. I was a coach. I was involved in my church and I had a wife in medical school and I, I was holding and down a dog. The and, a, and a dog, right? And to, to sit back and think, hmm, I want to qualify for the USA championships and probably have to vault 555, 560 at the time to be able to get in. Is this feasible? No. For me, no, it wasn't. Therefore, I was able to take the pressure off and think, all right, yeah. I'm going to teach my high schoolers how to pole vault um, by being inclusive with it. I'm going to be involved in it. I'm going to run intervals with them. I'm going to teach them you know, step by step how to pole vault the way that I know how they should pole vault. And it was so fun. I had so much fun with it. And that's what continued to help me regain the the love for the event. But I guess with you, Luke, like, I mean, how, how are you balancing kind of circling back to that original question? How are you balancing like being the GA, being a, a new husband to your wife, um, you know, like, and figuring out trying to qualify for the USA championships, yeah. whatever it is, or in this case, the Olympic trials would be the next, the next big step. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's the, the thing kind of like what you were talking about. I want to talk about that first about taking the pressure off and just being able to focus, you know, on, on other things, but also just enjoy pole vaulting and find your small improvements when you could have them. I mean, the, Olympic trials qualifying is pretty dang high. It's 575. And I'm not saying high. I can't do it. I'm not going to say that, but I'm also going to say that that is really freaking high. That's very, like, very high. Not too many people go from jumping, you know, 18, like I've made 18 feet, I think like seven times total in my life. Not too many people go from making seven times total 18 feet to, uh, or 18 plus to jumping 18, 10 and a half the next year, you know? So, yeah. and this is over say? the span of three years that I've made 18 feet. 18 feet is a really high bar for me right now. And yeah. I've made it a few times and been blessed enough to be able to get to a USA championship and to place ninth place at one of them um, and open up at 545. I was pretty pumped about that. But yeah, the big thing is like taking that pressure off, like you were saying, like yeah. if like allowing myself to just recognize that hey my goal isn't to go and place top three at the usa championships or top seven at the usa championships my goal is to hopefully get to the usa championships and it's the same kind of concept ironically here's a photo of this is a good photo whoa that our mom made us Dang. this is a picture of all mine, of us mine's still packed away in a box i gotta find that <laughs> that was a picture for those of you who are listeners and can't see the video. That's a picture of my brothers and dad and I praying after I won the state championship. So all four of us had won the state championship, but that picture always reminds me of like the small goals that we always had. It was like freshman year, dad, he, he would tell us, Hey, what's your goal? You know? And Jake was kind of the pioneer. So it was like, I, dad probably had no idea what your goal was, but no, well, we, but it, we thought that there was a chance that I could qualify for state as a person. Yeah, so that it was like, okay, year one, freshman year, qualify for state, hopefully. Year two, you know, get to the state final. It wasn't even about placing. It was just get to the state final. Yep. Year three, Jake won state. That was a pretty high precedent for all of us. So then, and then year two or three, Josh won state. And then I was like, dang, dude, if I don't win state, I'm trash. Game over. I, yeah. <laughs> so I and good and thing you won it twice state. and set the state record. So yeah. so that's kind of what it was. Is it was like there was all those small goals and like although I remember sophomore year being like, dude, I'm like 
top three in the state and dad's telling me the only goal I have is qualify for finals. This is weird. But then I qualified. That was my only goal though. So then once I did it, I was like, Oh, pressure's off, dude. I don't care anymore. It's like I qualified for finals. That's all I wanted to do. Now I get to just go jump and have fun. That's And I feel like as far as balancing all of this, it's like, as long as I'm willing to work with dad and, and him and I like work together as far as setting small goals and goals that are actually attainable and fun to work towards. It's not that hard, you know, like I, I wake up and go to work or go to North central. Usually I work out from eight to 10 or eight to nine thirty every day and then go and, you know, recruit some kids from, from 10 o'clock until two o'clock. And then I go and train some kids from four until eight, you know, some nights. What do you, so, what do you say to the kid? You know, let's say there's a, there's a girl who wants to, um, take top three at state. Right. And in her head, she's got this, um, this goal of, I want to jump 13 feet. I want to take top three at state and I want to win the conference championship and maybe, you know, throughout the season, if I happen to jump, I don't know what girls junior qualifying is, you know, 13, three qualify like for junior now. <laughs> <laughs> junior USA. It's like, and, and I know you've fallen into it. I've fallen into it. Jake's fallen into it where we have these, we have, we have six goals instead of one, you know, totally obtainable goal. And what do you say what do you say to that person? Like, what do you, as a coach at, at rise, what do you say to that, you know, a top performing girl vaulter, let's say that has these really big goals or, or any girl vaulter for that matter? I think it's actually a funny question because half the time when I ask a kid, you know, about what their goal is and we talk to them all the time about having process goals over outcome goals. Like if I ask a kid, Hey, what's your goal? And they say, I want to jump 16 feet. You know, it's just like, well, I don't know what, you know, like, what are you going to do to do that? You know, you got to have something to accomplish on the way to jump in 16 unless, and if then if you don't jump 16, everything is terrible. Right. Yeah. So I, to be honest, I always, what I do with my athletes is I ask them really, really early. Like I asked this kid that I train um, in Chicago, I asked him about two weeks ago, Hey, what's your ultimate goal for next year? And he was like, I want to jump 15, six to 16 feet and have a chance to maybe win a state championship. It was kind of a stretch of a goal, but I was like, Hey, all right, you said it now, delete it from your memory. And now we have to work on, and you have to trust in me and you have to trust in yourself about what you need to do now. That's going to be best for you leading up. And I said, you're not going to jump 15, six or 16 now. You're probably not going to jump it three months from now. Yeah. There's a strong chance you won't jump it six months from now. But a year from now, whenever it actually matters and the state championship's coming around, 15-6 could be an option. If you're on the right poles and we've gone through the right stuff and done the actual steps that it takes to get to that, yeah. you can maybe jump that. But throughout that time, your goal has to be, and leading up to that meet, your goal's got to be, hey, what pole is it that I'm going to jump on to jump this bar or win this conference championship or get third at state? And yep. what grip am I going to have to grip and how strong am I going to have to be and how fast am I going to have to be? Probably a lot stronger and faster than you are right now. So yeah. I, that's For basically sure. what I told him. And since then we haven't pole vaulted and all we've done is <laughs> yeah, right. strength and speed. And, and just he's like probably really, just, just fine. Really, yeah. One thing you said that I liked is, um, deleting that, that height. Um, and I think that there's, you know, I'm training for the marathon. I keep saying it. And if I put a time, you know, and I stare at that time, some people function that way. Some people like that. Some people like to, to strive towards that. I personally have been in the, the delete, the, uh, delete the file, uh, mode, get it in your head. Okay. That's good. I think it'd be really cool to run, let's say a three hour marathon one day. Got it done with it get miles in miles, 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 and not really focus on that because otherwise you're measuring yourself up against that. If that, that athlete yeah. you're training every workout thinks 16 feet, 16 feet, 16 feet, 
guess what happens when they, you know, barely slid over a 14 foot bungee at practice or, or, or bar. They're so frustrated because they pissed. fell yeah. two feet short of their goal. And right. that's, or even that's if they jump 15, scary. nine in practice, they're still pissed. You it's know? like, I right. didn't do it. I didn't do it. Hey, I, I, I haven't let Jake talk a lot here, but I'm wondering, Jake, this is a curveball question for you, even though Luke's on here. Um, this and then is we Topo can, Chico, by the way. This is just that, mineral water. It's our first sponsor. No, oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> I thought he was drinking Corona. <laughs> no, yeah. It's, Can't drink that nowadays. It's, it's, mineral, it's mineral water. Yeah. Just wanted yeah, to don't be that drinking Corona. That does, that does your body bad right uh, now. Uh, no. Uh, what, what, are you, what are your thoughts, Jake? Um, and Luke, you can voice your thoughts as well. We keep saying bungee. And I, I – there's – Oh, boy. I know, I know, but I, I don't want to dive too deep into it because I don't think you gotta that. Got to get dad on the podcast. Yeah. The, the point. <laughs> dad will have this shut down in just a second. Here's my thought. I'll, I'll, I'll give my thoughts, and then Jake, I want you to give yours, and then Luke, you can give yours. But yeah, the reason I like using a bungee, and so many people are like, no, you got to use a bar and bar awareness, and you got to, is simply because I found with myself and the vaulters I've coached that the more good vaults you have, the better you get. And yeah. I've found from a time and efficiency standpoint, not at all bashing bar awareness and vaulting at a bar. I think vaulting at a bar is necessary on occasion, but at practice, we're talking about practice. Mm. If <laughs> you are I taking understand. five vaults at a bar, because that's what you've had time for versus 15 at a bungee and you aren't mentally capable enough to, to hop into a competition and vault the same way you did on the majority of those 15 vaults at a bungee. I think personally, that's a, that's a you problem. That's yeah. not a, a me problem. So what are your thoughts, Jake? Yeah, I I mean, you could you could come at this little thing from a million different angles because <clears throat> even while you're just talking about that, I was just like, you know, you, you don't have to be um team bar or team bungee. Like you can I know. Or just, team who you can just mix them. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We gotta get him on here. Yeah. It's not like it's not like you like have to you know what i'm a bungee guy and all i do is jump on bungees or i'm a bar guy and all i do is jump at bars like you you can use the them you know wisely but if you're running a, a, a class uh you know like at my my club you know and you have 10 athletes i'm i'm going to opt for the more reps um without a bar because yep. because it's just like you know we always talk about like you want to get better you know luke was saying luke was saying luke was saying about his athlete wants to be better a year from now wants to jump that sometimes what dad would do and what i've done too is i talk to kids in reps they'll be like well i want to jump this high all right thousand reps yep. yeah thousand, thousand reps, reps. to a year or two a thousand reps yeah you'll probably be there. Or like there, somebody will come to me and say, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't know. I'm not touching my feet to my top hand and my rock back. How do, how do I do that? How do I do that? You're probably 300 reps away. Yeah. You know, and that's not a, a degrading thing. Like that. No, Some, yeah, it's, being honest. It's, it's just, Hey, would you rather me tell you to just do it and you get frustrated for a year or two, or would you rather maybe even start to mark it down in your notebook? Like, Hey, I got 20 more reps in today. I'm getting better, incrementally better and better and better. Luke, what are, what's your thoughts on, on the bar and bungee? And I guess, let me throw one tiny little curveball. D3 versus D1. D3, we have a lot more people participating at practice. So to Jake's point of true. like, you know, it, we want reps. We have a lot of people. We're trying to rub a, run, run a club system here. Like you you might have at a D3 practice, 11 people. And no, but well, and in our case. And guys and if, girls mix, you might have. That's a what I was about to say. Stuff, in our case, guys and girls D-cath. might be mixed at times. I would say as far as that D3 versus D1 thing too, like, I mean, I'm not, this is not at all like saying anything about anything bad about 
another jumper or anything, but you also like whenever, well, Josh, whenever you were in school, all the guys were jumping freaking 17 plus. Like you had like five guys jumping 17. Yeah, that was an interesting at a division time three at school. North, That's North jacked Central. up. We, That's messed up, dude. That's we, crazy. And we all, we all lived together. Yeah, that's, that's I know a whole, that was that's a whole nother that's uh, fence. That was yeah. talk about some really, really fun times, man. Yeah. That house. That, that was, was awesome. A that was a cool house. But whenever I was in school, which we did actually did have good jumpers. We had I had two teammates who were jumping over five meters. Um, but whenever you're if you are talking about jumping at a bar and I, let's say I wanted to jump at a seventeen foot bar, they wanted to jump at a sixteen foot bar, that's not too bad. But then you bring in a couple freshmen who are jumping 14. Then you got to drop it a couple more feet. And then you bring in maybe a girl into the equation jumping at a 12 foot bar. And you got five or six jumpers, you know, jumping at all these different bars. That takes right. forever. And like dad it does. I mean, if, and also our, our dad is a, uh, he's a school teacher. So, and he coaches it and he coached at North Central whenever I was, whenever we were all vaulting. And it's like, what are you going to make him stay for four hours to finish yeah, a, or that's... three hours to finish a vault workout? You know, right. that just doesn't make much sense. You know, but, and then as far as the club yeah. thing goes, like it's also a big safety concern for like the club athletes. You don't know which ones are prepared or I guess we right. would know which ones are prepared and ready, but you also well, and, don't yeah. know when something's going to go South, you know? Yeah. We're all, we're, and, and the other thing too, and, and, and the, obviously this is, this can be, this can, you know, clear up your issues. Uh, the more you jump at a bar, the more comfortable you're going to be at yeah, a bar. So that is sure. the biggest argument for jumping at a bar. 100%. No doubt. That's the biggest argument for it. And I agree with that. And if it's just you and a couple of your homies jumping, that's we've done that. Great. We've, no, we've done that. that. We, but we the reality our... is I tell, I tell uh, the kids at, at the uh, club, like there, you have to look at like uh, the risk versus the reward on anything that you do in training. Okay. So if you're, if you're a coach and you're going to have your athletes uh, do something new, that's out of the box, you have that, that risk has to be worth the reward. So that reward in this case would be, you know, them having an, an incredible uh, practice jumping at a bar and everyone is, is you know, rock solid mentally, and they're doing a great job. But the risk on that is that you're finishing, like, as far as like your athletes finishing their jumps, yeah. will probably drop down to about 50%. You True. know, they'll, they will finish about 50% of their vaults. Um, one kid might be having a, a, the day of their lives and doing really well, but probably on average, not, not everybody's going to be doing that, you know? So, yeah. so are you willing to risk having your workout blow up? You know, are you willing to blow up these athletes workouts and have them f have a epic fail for a workout? Yeah. Is that worth the reward of them jumping at a crossbar a couple of times in the in club environment, in the club not, environment? Yeah, exactly. In the club it's environment, not track meet, it's not, you know? it's not suitable, but for the, I guess to further the argument with the vaulter who is, um, you know, 12 foot guy, high school vaulter who, who like is, is definitely afraid of the crossbar. Like, right. And, and runs through every meet because of it. Yes. The coach should carve some time out to yeah. drop the bar down to 10 feet and have them make it 10 times in a row over a crossbar so that they can take a breath of fresh air and be like, all right, we're working towards some progress here. That's a totally different situation. And I, the, I don't want to spend the, a whole bunch of time talking about bar versus bungee, but I think, yeah, it was I just want to, yeah, go for my, it. My argument is that, so my answer is that I think both could be used. I think definitely, I think bungee for efficiency of workout whenever it comes to not during a really intense time of the year. I think it's the same thing that could be applied to periodization and lifting. Like you do a high volume with a low intensity during right. the time that you're not really competing, jump at a bungee a bunch of times or jump at a crossbar, sure. but like, a really stinking low crossbar like two or three feet below your pr and just smoke over it a bunch of times and get used to it 
but then as the season goes on, my PR is 18, four and a half. Maybe I'll take cracks at 18 feet in practice over a bar yeah. and see how that works. But as long as you've built up that confidence leading up into it, if you haven't built up that confidence jumping at a bungee or jumping at a low bar, I just don't think it could work. And also, yeah. Go ahead. Mondo and Sam, those are the two, the two bar guys, right? Right. And, they, and that's the thing is that they grew up, never jumped not at a bar. They always jumped at a bar. I mean, I've yeah. seen interviews with them where they were like, yeah, I've never really jumped at a bungee in my life. We just right. always jump at bars. But Renault and Buka, I every training video I've ever seen of either of them, they've jumped at a bungee. So right. it's like it's true. there's two different schools of thought there. And it's not that Renault would, couldn't jump at a bungee and it's not or at a bar and it's not like Sam couldn't jump at a bungee or something like that. Um, I think it's just based on what – that coach is trying to accomplish that day i'm like as far as our coach or as my as my dad as our dad um he's a big advocate for jumping at bungee because he believes in getting reps in and having an efficient workout but if you go into a workout with a bar and you're like hey well let's jump in a bar today or he says hey let's jump in a bar today and you have an efficient workout he's cool with that too he just doesn't like the non-finish 50% of the time. Type. For sure. That's a tough, and, you know, this tough is, number. This is my last thought on it is you do have practice at a bar. It's exactly like I was talking about earlier. It's a track meet. It's, a track meet. it's the best practice. For sure. <laughs> the best yeah. practice. The ultimate practice is a track meet at a crossbar. Do you got issues with jumping at a crossbar? Well, you need to set – practice like process goals yep. for your track meet start start small you know, and work your way up start, too. don't start six start inches low. below your pr i know Damn dude it bugs the crap man. out of me i've talked to a lot of elite guys who like i i can't really think of exactly who but like i've talked to a few where we're going into a track meet like the first meet of the year and you know, me and another dude will be like, hey, what are you opening up at? And we're both like, oh, we're going to open up at like five meters or something, you know, like just open up really low, like 16 feet or five meters, like might as well. It's the first meter of the year, get a bunch of jumps in. For but sure. then we'll, we'll overhear that somebody else with the like roughly the same PR as us is opening up at 520 or 525 or something like that. Yeah. And I kid you not, that actually happened. And at that meet specifically, I could – like the two who opened up lower ended up clearing more bars and jumping higher event at the end of the day than the guys who were, Do you, you know, think some of the guys, not all of them, but some of the guys who were opening up li higher. I feel like you got to build a rhythm, especially if it's early in the year. Rhythm. Yeah. Do you think there's some people who feel like it's like, all right, I'm going to vault, I'm going to open up at, um, you know, 540 or 550 because um not me because i wish but <laughs> open up at 540 or 550 because i want to make 560 and i want to have as much energy <laughs> built up for that vault right. um i don't know that everyone's work that's, for a, me, man. that's a slippery just doesn't slope. work for me yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. or you can be like well, steve or hooker though. i was just i was just thinking about that guy the other day oh he was uh, one of my favorite vaulters of all time just absolute yeah explosive amount yeah. of energy in his vault but yeah that that one or two jump so, like so he missed 585 on his first attempt and then passed to 590 made it and won and then packed it up Savage. yeah that's that's next level that's next level that was pretty sick all right but Luke. i do know what you're talking about because cole walsh if you guys know who cole walsh is nike sponsored athlete mm. Throwing wow. that out. Shout out. <laughs> is that the guy who is that the guy is that the guy who was dancing on the the, He's the yeah with like Instagram the video kind of like He's a yeah, really good like dancer. got like some long curly hair is that He's the guy who that dude, fell that dude on is that so cool. skateboard uh he did what no is he I, the one who fell on the skateboard when he no that's that, audio that, that was that was oh that gosh. was audio when he like slid down Dang. the whole street and got that those was speed, yeah, speed yeah, I'm not wobbles, doing any of that baby. type of skateboard. No. I'm just popping kickflips. <laughs> like, I'm going to ball. <laughs> um, but Cole Walsh, he, he told me uh, about like whenever he entered into the Diamond League scene, that, like last year was his first year on the Diamond League, and he was like, dude, it was crazy. I like went to a meet, and the opening bar was like 555. 
and his yeah. and he had jumped 575 maybe but hadn't jumped that in you know a year and he said he opened up at 555 and PR'd that day but he's at a me, diamond league day, though he's jacked yeah, at a diamond man. league you jacked up whenever i opened up at 545 at usa's and made it <laughs> Time really it was really jacked. weird. I felt like I was not in a rhythm at all. I was on the wrong pole. I didn't know what I was supposed to be gripping. And I yeah. didn't feel like I had a chance at the next bar just because I didn't know yeah. what to do, really. That's, you know? that's not the best. Hey, I have a question. Um, we were talking about skating just a second ago. Yep. Who's the best skater over 550? Are you uh, in the top, are you, are you in the top five? Nate Richards. I'm, Nate Richards is the best skater. Yeah, by far. The best skater. That's my heater, if you guys can hear it. I don't know if you could hear Yeah, that. I was wondering what that was. It sounded like it sounds uh, like somebody, somebody was going there. to the bathroom next door or something. I'm gonna shut it off really quick. Yeah, you better. You better shut that stinking thing off. We'll see if that works. We got a so, old since I didn't old Chicago style apartment, Chicago style hot dog. Chicago. Apartment. Now because busy. I didn't vault five fifty, Jake, I can't be in the category. Oh, dude, I didn't Nate even think Richards about that. Nate Richards is the best Sorry. skater over yeah. the <laughs> Hey, middle, I swear, middle son, I, didn't vault 550. <laughs> just, it's, I, oh, let's just, I, what's even funnier is if you would have included me in the conversation and then we would have backtracked and been like, actually, yeah. it doesn't count because you didn't right. vault 550. I don't know. I've seen a couple of videos on Nate. Like so I don't know was, this he, Nate, but I know I think no, I've you, seen some of no, his videos. No, you know. Okay, so he jumped at uh, IHSA. Is that the guy who does like, the bonelesses? No, <laughs> he's okay. He went hard. to Notre Dame. Okay, he's he's got red <laughs> hair. So he's got red hair. He went to McHenry High School. I think. <laughs> McHenry um, in got, Illinois. Yeah, but he's got red hair. I jumped at USA's with him. Yeah, he looked um, good. I jumped IHSA yeah, with him. He's got like a, a little bit of flow. He's not super active on social media right what's, now. But that's kind of what's his skate style like? Is he? A, is he? He's a, like a Shane O'Neill, but I mean, like, what? like, not like whoa! A, <laughs> this dude should good give good up Shane pole vaulting then and no, he's not <laughs> just like, cut straight he's not over like to skate. Jaws. He's not like Jaws, like jumping yeah. down. Yeah, that's what I mean. There's different skaters. He, he's or is he doing? Can he do a like a kick? He's got a clean tray flip on a. Yeah, I've seen it. He's got a easy tray flip. Okay. He's got a good Insta. Uh, there's like a video of him on Instagram uh, I that try to Luke it, sent me over one right time on the like, Go Skate Day. Yeah, and like. I talk to him about it all the time. I'm like, dude, you, that tray flip looked yeah. awesome. What's his name? Like he, he's got the trays down. He's got like Nate he's Richards. doing some Smiths and stuff. Yeah, but he's he's probably the best. He's the only one that I know that really skates though. With I'm the, the I other guy. I think I'm maybe I'm number two. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> i don't know i can't yeah. find it man if we're talking about other people yeah. too though nick high song obviously was oh, but, yeah. he's trained oh, by, but he trains nate that's the funny part he trains out in arizona with that's yeah. where i saw that's that awesome. yeah because they had he had a, a video he posted up of nick high song or whatever on his Instagram a while back i think he said or he's posted it up on his story or something like this guy can uh rip the uh poles and rip <laughs> i mean i don't <laughs> i was gonna say i was gonna say rip the poles and and rip the bowls but, <laughs> but i didn't want people to think that, rip the bowl. that he was <laughs> smoking a bunch of pot <laughs> oh, no. mean, like a skate bowl like a half pipe that's a that's round he can Dude, rip the I... poles and rip the bowls <laughs> I thought of it in a whole sand, other, baby. I thought of it in a whole other way of rip the bowls. I was like, what the heck? All right. Okay, yeah, I yeah, literally but, can't. Is it Nate best. Richardson? I can't Richards. find it. Uh, I C H A R T Z Richards. Like the Z? Easy. Rip the bowls and rip the bowls. <laughs> what the heck? I, I literally I can't I can't we find can't it. Even, Anyway, I'll send we'll, it to you yeah. afterwards. Okay, we'll maybe we'll, we'll we'll give we'll maybe give him a I'll shout out. I'll, I'll tag you in his uh like post or something. It'll make it'll make sense and maybe and uh, I'll say this is what I was talking about. We have 110 about. followers on Instagram. It'll probably gain him 110, 110 followers, right? Dude. Yeah. 
You're welcome. So, yeah, that's the, that's the best. (laughs) You're welcome for the 110 (laughs) followers. He's the only one I've seen actually skate um, and do it well. Yeah, because Haisung used to do, um, used to skate a little bit, I think. And then I was, I was actually posting up some stuff about these bad boys the other day. Ooh. Oh yeah! Yep. Speaking of Sky flashbacks, systems, Sky Systems Three. We can't find two of them though. We can't find Sky Systems Two and Americana. Or, do, or was that one? Those are probably Americana. at North Central or something, in a deep in a locker somewhere. So with I Sky Systems, boy, out man. in comes. Check this out, man. Jan Johnson. We need to get him on here. That Sky is Sky One. Full on marketing right there. Yeah. <laughs> <Sky one. That's laughs> awesome. No, I mean it's really cool because actually Jan, uh, his brother Tim, uh, yeah, you know, they both they're Bloom both from High Illinois. School. Yeah, Bloom High School. Um, and he actually did they go to Bloom? I think they might have No, they went Gordon. to Oak Park River Forest, I thought. Dude, we have no idea. I know he used anyway. to coach. He used to coach at Bloom. He used to coach like. No, he used to Bloom. have a club. He, he used to have a club there. Well, that's like them do. saying you, Jake went to Plainfield Central and South, and Luke went to Plainfield. We have so many high schools. I all I within know, one man. compact area. For Nobody can keep track of where went, we went. I thought they went to like Morton or something. Who Starkey? Like no, the no. the Starkey Johnson brothers. Did you know the that? Johnson the Johnson brothers? Yeah, I, I knew that. that. Yeah, I didn't know that. Until Shout out to uh, right John. Now. John Wood tried to uh, tried to break that record. I don't think he ever. Uh, does he no, have? It, does uh, Starkey have the? Starkey's record? record got broken. Actually, a kid jumped sixteen six there, not too long yes, ago. Yes, I do remember. He goes to U of I. Was, no, he was he was a vaulter. How dare you? Whenever I was living in Palatine, he was a vaulter in Palatine, and I remember yeah. getting the local newspapers and seeing him seen him he was he was my friend adam's like friend they were at school together but i was looking at these sky systems the other day and like that was like part of the pole vaulting culture like i feel like there's been like a cultural shift uh in pole vaulting to like where back in the day like when we were growing up you watch sky systems and you see people skating mini ramps and just doing a bunch of just not dumb stuff but like just fun, fun looking stuff, stuff yeah. that you could bust it you could hurt yourself you know but i th- feel like back then it was like hey man yeah we're pole vaulters we're skaters we're yeah do you know we we do these fun we do it all and, and i was i always we rip, it very, we rip bowls yeah <laughs> ripping poles and ripping bowls <laughs> hey full disclaimer we do not at all yes. promote that the use <laughs> no. of drugs we're the complete it, opposite it is it was a it was a accident <laughs> or, josh josh made an accident, <laughs> josh I, had an accident. I i did make an accident a, 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 accident um what so like why so who, who it's like does, water boy so nobody ever uh does that anymore they don't they don't really like do no no that's that's like the cool that's why i started to love pole vaulting was i mean not because of sky systems but because mine was mainly because of neo vault like i when we would watch and you have neo vault there i know i saw that picture on your instagram but like dude shout out to jake for being on neo vault yeah no that's what i was about to say like big goal i i'm not kidding when i was a little kid i think my only goal was to be on neo vault one day yeah. Because I I used to watch all of the neo well, because vaults. they and by the way some people who vaulted upper seventeens and those meets where it'd be like hey they just showed two vaults of that guy who jumped five forty that's Dude, awesome that, that meet that I was in in uh, Finland where I was on where I met Sean Brown and he filmed uh, this this track meet that I was in uh, I think it was this bad boy right here neo vault four. Yeah, the excellent adventure. Sean's excellent adventure. Uh, At that meet, I saw a 14-year-old Russian girl get her hand glued onto the top of a 14-foot-long pole. Mm. I'm not joking, dude. Her dad glued her hand onto it and was like, all right, here we go. Send it. And she was like 14 years old. 
Jeez. And she just ran in there and just with her hand just glued on there. Good. You're not running through. You're not no. running through. You're going to rip your arm off. And she hit that 14 foot long pole, knobbing the end of it and just got completely yep. rejected. Just, just, just I thought you were like, going to say, and then she cleared 10 six. <laughs> yeah. She ended up dropping her grip down and not jumping that high. But I was like, dude, that, that was the, one of the craziest mo moments to see a 14 year old. Yeah, dude. Neo vault was like, well, the uh, coolest thing is like, I would wake up December 25th, go down and check the stocking and I'd have a new Neo vault in it every, yeah. for like five years in a row yeah. or however often those things came out. Like I would, Ooh. yeah. The stinking Norberg, Norberg. man. Yeah. I another Illinois, one. Illinois. Yeah. Illinois yep. boy is good. I'm yeah. in that video. I'm actually in that in the background at the beach vault. Yeah. You remember that? I'm holding my skin board. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, that was my ultimate goal. And then Jake was on it. We turned, we got it for Christmas one, or I got it for Christmas. Uh, hey, let's just put the Neo vault on while we're opening presents. Why not? Yep. And, uh, played the Neo vault. <laughs> and then it's Somero. I think it was Somero Finland came on and Jake was like, Hey, I was there. Come on. Come on. And Jake was like, yeah, I was there. And then lo yeah. and behold, Jake comes running down and we were like, you made it. You yeah. did it. Borrowed you poles. My did poles the family, <laughs> you did the family goal. You achieved the family goal. I was and then the they stopped vault. being, having, having the Neil vaults. But you know, what's funny is that Sam yeah. Kendricks has never heard of Neil Paul. Oh man. Wait, what? Like That's until, I'm not kidding. until recently? I asked him, I was, we were at Texas uh, Expo and I was talking to, I think like Austin Miller about Neo Vault and we, and he was like, yeah, man, like that's why I've been walking around with my camera all the time. I'm trying to like make a video kind of like that again. And Sam was like, what's Neo Vault? I was oh like, are you curious? Oh, no. Sam Kendricks doesn't know what Neo <laughs> he's Vault so is. In the, he's so in the zone that he just isn't isn't no. where he's, he seems he's been like in the zone guy. since he's, he was five years old well it, what's the deal with him and his uh his army situation is he like i guess that would be a maybe shout out to sam kenricks you gotta come yeah, on we here try and, to get him on so he and, can answer that because i i've been curious about like not Dude. like the pole vaulting i know I, I i've tracked him understand how high he vaults and i'd love to hear more about the poles and grips and just everything we we're asking you but like by the way he grips I'm, 485 jake when he grew when he made six meters whenever he's holy cow the the army stuff though is i was at the meet the yeah army, that, that was so awkward you guys just had your own little sidebar sorry about that uh, i i'm just curious about the army the army piece because like there's you know that video of him stopping at the the national anthem and that was awesome and like active duty versus not active duty versus like i mean is he yeah i mean he, I, I wonder what the is he going I out actually, and, and running you know distance and, and have these you know 50 pound packs on and you know doing all that while he's training know. for vault that's i don't know it's a i hit him I mean, up yeah we i think he probably would answer that but i listened to a podcast with him on it the other day uh i was just browsing around i was like does he even do podcasts and then uh dude he was talking on this podcast about how he like so like you don't hear this part of things um and he obviously would be able to explain it better but uh he like destroyed his body like his freshman year of high school or college or something like that. Like he destroyed it on a, like some sort of training exercise for the army. And like, he like knocked all his, his face was like completely destroyed. He couldn't like open his mouth for a long time. He knocked all four of his teeth out. He like shattered his knee. Mm -hmm. Like, and I was like, and he, and it was like one of those injuries where it's like, Hey, this is going to be like for a really you know, you're going to be out for a really, really long time. And like, you never heard of that. I never thought, I thought that it was just like this for Sam Kendricks, all the way up, just straight up, straight up, straight, straight to up. The top. And turns out there's more to the story, man. So I think it'd be I interesting mean, to get him on. Yeah. Talk about that. Shout out to Sam Kendricks. It'd be uh, kind of cool to, to talk some stuff over. Um, Luke, what is your greatest attribute? What, what 
In pole vaulting? No, in life. You're you as a my person. mustache. Wow. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking not physical. We're not talking physical attributes here. Uh, but it is a pretty nice. You mustache. didn't specify until now, Jake. Yeah. What? What? If you could point to one thing about you and like about your personality or whatever that has enabled you to get to where you're at now. Yeah, I, it would definitely be that I feel like I'm, well, it's kind of like two things. I'm extremely, this could be good and bad, extremely hard on myself when it comes to situations where I want to do well at it. But that also just kind of me like it, what I'm basically saying is I'm extremely competitive um, in just about everything. So there's not really right. any sort. And it's main, it's just competing against myself. Like when it comes to me learning about how to play the drums, man, like I want and I start playing a song or something and I don't get it right. I get pissed and I just keep playing it until I can get it right. And the same thing with like when I was trying to pop those burials. Well, that happened literally in like three tries. Well, a very old skateboarding trick for people who don't know. Yeah. Um, but if I'm like going out and doing kickflips or whatever on the skateboard and they're not happening or I'm trying, you know, a f- Nolly 360 big spin or something, mm-hmm. like I was telling Josh mm-hmm. I was trying to learn and it wasn't working Sound and I'm trick. slipping out, slipping out, slipping out. I'm like, dude, I don't want to give up until I figure it out. And yeah. that's it's been very hard on my vault. Yeah. On my vaulting at times because I'll get into a workout. And I'll take, you know, 10 jumps. They'll be pretty good. But clip the bungee on the way down on my last jump. I'm just going to take one more, no touch it, and be done. And then I clip it for the next 10 in a row. And it's like, dude. Right. You know, and I just want to keep fixing and fixing and fixing it. And, I I mean, it just goes into everything. And I think that that's what's created a well-rounded athleticism where I'm like, where, cause whenever a lot of it comes from you guys, like I'm really thankful that I had two older brothers who allowed me to be, be beaten, beat. I told you not, I told you not talk about that. Hey, speaking of, uh, I, I have to beaten up when it comes to sports and athletics, because we would, you know, we had that pole vault, uh, two PVC pipes like this with a bungee hanging across in our backyard yep. that we used to go back there and pole vault at it. And, you know, we'd have small competitions where you guys would go lefty, I'd go righty or, you know, you know I, some might, some I remember. Better. we, hey, I got to go to the bathroom. I'm going to leave really quick. I'll be right back. Okay. But That's I'll leave fine. you with a little something, some couple people to keep you company. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh that's hilarious <laughs> um something that, uh, that i remember whenever we would vault in the backyard with the uh with the the two pvc pipes and the bungee is i would vault at a higher bungee height than you because i was what five years older than you but yeah. i would hate to pull the bungee back down so I was yeah. literally and figuratively raising the bar for you because I just, I, it was more of an inconvenience to bring it down. I'd be like, no, just, just jump at that. And I we know. do it. And actually we do it now, um, or used to do it a, a year or two ago where, you know, you'd be vaulting at, at 550 and it'd be like, I, I'd be like, all right, I guess, I guess I know, I'll I go, think go at it as you, well. Try to hook my feet over. You played, you know, arguably the biggest role in my vaulting career um, when it came to training and stuff, because you, so Josh went to North central college and he's four years older than me. So whenever I was a senior in high school, he was a senior in college. So it, we kind of basically backed up every single year where I wasn't in high school with him and I wasn't in college with him. And so your freshman year at college, well, that was kind of a sketchy year cause you had your shoulder stuff, but basically still training hard though, you know, between my freshman and sophomore year of high school, and sophomore and junior year of high school and junior and senior year of high school, those summers you would come home and it was, you had your own house. That's the thing is that I feel like a lot of people don't realize that you came home to train a lot just to have somebody to train. I I stayed home June and July during college, not because I had to, um, not, not, I shouldn't, shouldn't say two straight months, but two or three weeks at a time 
mainly because of you, Luke, because I, I really, and, and I wanted that's what to... it came down to is like, I remember I tell a lot of people, this is that, you know, I would, from my freshman year, I went from 13, nine to 15, nine junior year. I went 15, nine to 16, 10, and then went 16, 10 to 17, five, my senior year. And I remember, um, there were two summers back to back. There were two it summers. It was between sophomore, sophomore and junior. Yeah. Freshman, sophomore, sophomore, junior. And then Jake and I trained together, I think junior and senior. So Jake no, I was responsible there. There for, for getting you to go the highest. Right. Is that? <laughs> yeah. No, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> you were there for, you yeah. were there for that all is, of them. That's, Josh, Jake said that's, summer. that's correct. That's somewhat true. But um, <laughs> no, I think it was, I think, no, cause you came home cause that was your first year out of college and that's when you broke your back. Oh, was my, before that's my senior year. Story. Uh, I got yeah. it. So All we'll right. get into that some other time, but it was, it, I think a lot of it comes down to that competitiveness and then that turns into Dude, me I just would... wanting to not being afraid to work my butt off. And a lot of that is because of you guys and being able to grow up seeing my brother win state championship and then get lifted over the fence, you know, after you, after you guys both won and, and seeing how emotional that was for both of you guys and how it was like, I never realized it until the day it happened. I was like all of their hard work from freshman year through senior year, nonstop pole vault and training and, you know, discipline and stuff like that, that 99% of other school kids weren't doing. Yeah, they did. And they won state. And I was like, I want nothing more than to just do that. Like that is what I want to do. And I didn't have the persistence and the hard work to start, you know, my freshman year, I was the worst, honestly, um, yeah, as, you were. as crazy as that is. Yeah, I remember I, there's, there the there's beginning. a quote that dad <laughs> probably he'll never forget i, I do remember jumped, i jumped 13 there. feet at a track meet at uh, wheat Mormonville south high school my freshman year and i got beat by a kid who i thought i should beat. and i had been stuck at 13 feet all of indoor season my freshman year i jumped it at my first meet and i didn't jump higher than that until the outdoor season and i went up to dad after the meet and I'm, i wasn't crying or anything but i was pissed and i was like why do i have to be the worst winder and he was oh, like, oh, no. Right. Yep. <laughs> and But what he told me was something that was really, really important. He goes, you know what you have to do? And I made an Instagram post about this. He said, you got to be patient with me and be patient with pole vaulting. He's like, none of this happened for your brothers right away. Yeah, they right. might have jumped a little higher than you, but they were also taller. They were stronger. You know, there's a lot of other things that they were better than you at that time. And he said, if you be patient, you'll see what I'm talking about. You just have to work hard and be patient and know that it's going to happen. And I went into each summer basically training with Josh, and I would get woken up at 7.30 in the morning to go to Five Star Fitness down the road. And, you know, we'd jog up or drive our car over to Five Star and be in there for like an hour, an hour and a half. Then we'd drive back, drink a protein shake, and drive over to Joliet Memorial Stadium. Straight to the track, man. That was straight to the track, four, and then we would four or five be out there, hours of be out there for like two hours, work. you know, doing bleachers, and then after bleachers, doing plyos, and then after plyos, yeah. doing uh, you know, one hundred meter sprints, and it was just all of that stuff. It like built in some, it built in me something that was like, dude. I love this. Like, I love that right now I know that I'm training harder than everyone I'm competing against. And I yeah. know that I'm, if, if I have to back off into anything, I know I can return back to that hard work that I put in. If I'm hurt, if I'm, there's a headwind, if I'm on a small pole, whatever it is, I know that I've worked harder than all of those guys I'm competing against. So there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to be on top, you know? And I felt like that was the same way that, you know, Jake, probably did it for Josh and dad was probably a lot of that for you, Jake, because you were yeah. kind of on your own. So, <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. I mean, everybody, we all three uh, had a very similar and very different path through the whole thing. And you were yeah. talking earlier about how you were throwing a fit and that started that, like uh, where you were like, uh, I'm the worst winder. Yeah. Um, it made me think of like irrational things that I said whenever I was uh, pole vaulting. Oh. And uh, this is uh, where 
running, you know, we'll, we'll probably, you know, close out after this, but I thought it would be kind of funny to share some, like a moment like that. And, uh, I'll start my senior year. I had won the state meet my junior year and, and this is in high school. So I won state and then I was going to repeat and I was going against somebody who was really, really good. Phil Hansen. He was incredible athlete. And it was basically me and him kind of battling it out, um, for that that state championship and so I go and I get second and I immediately just throw my pole on the ground and then go and then I kicked a chair I kicked a folding chair like annihilated it and then I I ran I didn't run I like swiftly walked out of the stadium to a pond okay and then dad was was there and I'm just sitting there just Oh, I hate my life, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got so good. And then dad comes up to me, and dad comes up to me and, and he was like, dude, you need to relax. And I was like, all I want to do right now is just jump in that pond. <laughs> I was like, and dad, and dad just looked at me and was like, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Could you imagine if I said if I went? That's and hilarious. And I kicked that chair and then ran out, just screamed, I hate my life, and just jumped right into that pot. Oh my god. I was I was thinking about that the other day and I was like, that's so embarrassing, man. Yeah. I know. Like that's I think people have to get used moments. to sharing those stories, though. Like, be honest oh, with yourself. Man, we okay. at all have acted like I know. Before. And I, I, I <laughs> mentioned last podcast of somebody who had a, a, you know, consistently had emotional breakdowns or something. I didn't, I didn't say that meaning we were uh, completely immune to that because oh we, gosh, we well, have you hear that story. Yeah, I almost Jay- jumped into a pond. <laughs> Jay- I almost jumped yeah. into a pond in my spikes in everything and if dad wasn't there i might have been swimming in that pond just standing hip hip deep into in a retention pond. <laughs> you know ah! i don't i don't know luke's story but luke well, I, the one that comes so to mind with me that i wasn't there for for you um, oh. was whenever that dude almost ran across the run oh, or ran across dude. the runway that got me pissed you pointed at him and you you grabbed I him. was about to do some bad stuff. I'm happy I didn't. <laughs> you but grabbed him. I yeah, so I that meet started what off What did you pretty whisper rough. to him like? I'm so like, this was I'm not going to name the college that it was at, but it was at a college that we had had a national championship at before that they have they had a pit that wasn't suited for a box collar. Like it was before it didn't have a cutout or anything. So when you put it in the pit shifted up and in and it caused your pole. Like it was literally halfway in the box causing your pole to hit it. I was like, there's, I can't pole vault like this. Like we're going to have to figure something out. So the only way they could do it is push the pit far enough back to where it wouldn't do anything. That way, every time I landed, I was literally landing on a down slope and bottoming out every time. Yep. And I was jumping on my standards on 80 came down to my third attempt at opening bar, ended up making it with a cruddy jump. And then I like missed. So I was already, you know, I was already pretty fired heated. up. Yeah. I was fired up. Not Bad a good time up. to step on the runway yeah. while Luke's third going. attempt, third attempt at <laughs> opening sure. bar and made it missed my second bar first attempt. And then second attempt at my second bar, I go running full force down the runway. I'm feeling good now and I'm pissed. So I'm running even faster. I'm probably not. I'm probably running slower, but I'm try- I'm pissed. So I'm like, I'm going to show, I'm going to do this right now. And a dude with headphones in, oh, he starts man. getting yelled at. And he's two feet on the runway at about the 10 foot takeoff mark. And I'm at about 30 feet, but my pole is 16 feet, five inches. So I'm like a foot and a half away from no, you, hitting him in his you, head you with the pole. Truly and I, I was like made thinking, him unconscious. Because my pole was lowering down, so it's even with the oh, dude's head, man, and he's just, just staring right, right at it head. like this. And he's like pulling his headphones out and goes like this, Boom. and he ducks, and I drop <laughs> my pole. And like I had so much speed, though, that I like kind of ran him. into him. But I ran into him, and I probably shouldn't have done this, but I like grabbed him like this, and I was like, you 
could have just died. <laughs> That's literally what I said. I said, I could have just killed you. Yep. Put it's your true. headphones away or you something. Probably like that. thought you said, said I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I could have just killed you. You're and I done. was so pissed because I was I wasn't mad because I was being selfish. I was so scared because I thought I was gonna legitimately yeah. hurt the dude. The, the and reason, I was like, dude, I don't want to hurt you. And then after the meet, I tried to find him so I could tell him I'm sorry wanna, that I got so he, pissed, but I was like, dude, he's right after you in that, his dreams and his nightmares. And then right. they kind of went like viral. Like I think Flegel posted. Well, that's it what up I was gonna say. I haven't. I hadn't talked to Steve and Flegel, who was the pole vault coach at University of Chicago. Um, he, I hadn't talked to him for like five years, and out of nowhere, I get this text from him that's like, "You got to see this." And it was <laughs> slow mo, which of course I got another clip I got to find and post on Instagram of Luke just like grab pointing at this dude and grabbing him and looking like he's going to just murder him. And it's, it's, you get so oh, much no. emotions built up. I, I mean, know, man. I've yeah. had, I've had, I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have gotten pissed though. That's the thing is like, that's a situation where, but it, you acknowledged it afterwards. You said yeah. to us, like, I should not have done that. It is and, what it and is. And that's the thing though, is like, I that's a situation that, that could though. have been avoided find him. by a facility being appropriately arranged. Correct. Or put hurdles up and flags up or something. Yeah. Or me recognizing that the facility isn't appropriate. I was already pissed off about the pit and all that. And just being like, you know what? It was a last chance meet. I had already qualified. I had already qualified for the national championship. Just accepting and being and humbling yourself and being like, I don't need to pole vault today. It's not going to create a good thing. So I just need to pack it up. And just accept that my next meet is going to be at the national championship because then you're leading into the national championship after almost punching the dude in the face. (laughs) And that's not a good vibe to want to enter into a meet too, you know? So I got, I got two quick stories. The first one is not that funny. And the second one is funny. The first one, (laughs) all, all of my stories revolve around. Dude was on your tent too. (laughs) No, No peeing on the tent. all, All of my stories are revolve around injuries, which is just, you know, hashtag josh is always injured yeah. um but hashtag the, cooper manning well it whenever i broke my back um i broke two transverse processes off my l4 and l5 so like you have your two spinal spinals you got these little things coming off and those broke <laughs> off a couple of them are still floating around in my back but oh. um that was totally there's a video on winder up youtube channel um that goes over why that happened which was all my fault um but i broke broke my back and it was right after an episode of rob deardex fantasy factory (laughs) where where if you hit hit and run i think they called it and i was like dang it oh yeah that would have if i would have ridiculous that ridiculousness that's what i meant um and sent it over to them i think that would have definitely been on there because i hit and instantly well, I like scorpion, like felt like, oh, I can still <laughs> your back. I remember box. that. Yeah. I, I, I broke my back Spinal. <laughs> in the box because I, I kind of like sat in it like a throne. I, I landed in the box. My back of my box hit the, the, <laughs> the top back of the box back. Back and I was, and, and I, there was a box collar in there. But the right. box collar wasn't adjusted appropriately and Pushed probably back a little bit in that it caused it to happen. But anyways, broke my back and took off running immediately. Another video that I'll have to uh, put on there. In. Yeah, you got to edit that in there. Um, that was a solid, solid and then back the, break. Uh, the, the second one, which is the funnier one, and then we can wrap it up. It'll be a good way to, to wrap this one up. <sighs> I've only broken one pole. Unlike Jake and Luke, who's broken – Every series of, I'm not going to say the yeah, brand of pole. Um, every every <laughs> every every pole you can imagine. Um, 14 feet through 17, 16, five. Um, I've broken all brands of poles. Yeah. Okay. Good. Let's just put that out there. And no, let's. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I I broke one pole, and when I broke it, it was actually a a a spike mark that broke the pole because it broke in half exactly where Brian McCormick, you know, shout out Brian McCormick spiked the pole. And I remember him spiking it and I didn't even tell him 
but I remember seeing him spike it right across that carbon label. And again, was a spike mark issue. Pole broke. And when it broke, the bottom half of the pole, I was still having energy flowing into the pit. The bottom half of the pole got me got me in the, in the, in the butt. spot. <laughs> got, got me in the spot. Yep. Hold and on, what spot? <laughs> it got it got me got me in, in the, the in the, the front butt. spot or the no, back spot no. it, it, it got it got me so oh no yeah. he's got a pen here's uh, here's subscribe here's, to our youtube channel because the video <laughs> you got to see the video if you want the full this, uh i don't i don't think this is uh this is inappropriate right I so it's what happened pole pole broke top oh. half whoops oh oh <laughs> <What? gosh. laughs> top, top half goes flying off right. bottom half is still in the box i don't know how oh i don't know why and i <laughs> oh. boom right on the butthole what the? yep <laughs> <laughs> I'm, de- I'm dead serious i i'm just Let's being a honest different word like a undercarriage or or okay. something <laughs> no, I, I don't know right in my undercarriage <laughs> and and it and it carried me partially into the pit uh, <laughs> and i remember uh, my coach just laughing hysterically uh, laughing hysterically at it because it was like not only were we all shocked that the pole broke but it was like, dude, is your backside okay? Because <laughs> that that did, your not, that did not. <laughs> your your undercarriage. Go check your undercarriage. <laughs> you need to go check out your undercarriage and make sure that everything's okay, dude. No joke, man. Could you imagine though those uh the, those, those carbon the, fibers? Uh, I, know, of a broken bone. I know, but it was it was a fairly clean. It was a clean break. I mean, if you want me to be honest, going into before we wrap it up there, there's so many of those videos where, where poles do carry under the bar and people get, they do. And people, yeah. You dad always taught us to push it back. You got to throw that pole back. Yep. Not just because you want to make the bar uh, and you don't want your pole to hit it. You need to throw that pole back because if that thing comes underneath, I mean, there's people, you know, got hit in their front carriage, or their front spot <laughs> got, hit in their, got hit in their back spot it's uh, true there's been there's a story of somebody this is wood there's a story of hey, somebody Dave, didn't you compete against that dude that got hit in the back spot yeah he's famous on youtube now though yeah, I mean, yeah he, he was, was on he was he on was ridiculousness on, yes yeah because Jinx. he broke that thing down it was like he was a popsicle <laughs> 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 you got popsicle <laughs> okay so, hey but but you also there's another story of of a person that went over i think it was in the 80s or 90s and pole comes under rips their shorts completely off yeah and then you're yep. and then you're in a really bad spot because Who you're at a family that? event I remember you're at a family function and your shorts get ripped completely wasn't off. that and Tim then, or I, if I should I, I know who it was and I don't know if I should say it. No, don't say it. Yeah. I know oh, who it was. Timmer Morganov had a had a situation. Did you see that where he finished a jump in the pole, passed through the under part of his shorts, passed through the waistband, and missed his face and the pole was stuck oh in his pants. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Didn't Sandy oh didn't Sandy gosh, Morris dude. get hit by a pole on her? She got hit by like three, like in the same at the World gosh. Championships, like in her in her quad. Yeah, like I remember, s- yeah, the That's quad. Scary. I remember seeing her make the bar and then like like hitting her quad. Now it's like, oh my gosh, that had to have hurt. Yeah, I, at first I thought she was like going like this because she was so excited to make it, and then they showed it in slow mo and it hit her leg, and she was doing that because it hurt so bad. That's somebody and she else. Had just won a world try to get on here. Her, uh, she's outstanding vaulter and her husband is a outstanding long jumper too. And I think he's from North Chicago. Um, Oh really? Just saying Illinois shouts out, shouts out to Illinois, (laughs) Illinois. All right, Um, guys, I got to get out of here, man. Yeah. Um, Same. It's time to get, get it going. Uh, this was a lot of fun and really, really appreciate you coming on Luke. And I think that you, um, 
I don't know, man. You, it's been it's been inspiring to have you as a, a younger brother. It's been really cool to watch your path through this whole thing, dealing with all the pressure of having, you know, you you know, your dad wins the state championship, your oldest brother wins the state championship, your middle brother wins the state championship, and now the pressure's on you to do that. And and then you, you've never really balked at any of that pressure which was pretty pretty outstanding and uh, well you three made it a lot easier for me yeah you're fun to talk to I feel like you're a nice person um <laughs> thank and, you and yeah man we've it's <laughs> it's been a pleasure having you on man appreciate it I'm sure this won't be the last time Josh yeah thanks anything? for having me for sure yeah I was just gonna say um one thing I always appreciated about you Luke is you mentioned that you're super competitive but you're never outwardly competitive you have a really really good way of owning your your emotions and letting them out when needed um but for the most part you didn't balk at any of that pressure you didn't ever say to me outright you know i i'm never i'm never gonna win state or i i have to win state like that that, that was a that was a time where i thought to myself that's a lot of pressure on him, is, man. but, but you didn't say anything. You showed you up, walk. you, you worked out hard, you lifted, you ran sprints, you vaulted at practice and you showed up and you won state and then you did it again. And then you broke the state record. And then you went on to jump 18 plus in college. And you know, now you're post collegiate and I don't see you stopping anytime soon. So, um, hey, well, and you made that legitimate. really, what's up? You, and you made that really good uh, ping pong video. Oh, that was pretty sick. <laughs> but hey, I mean, honestly, you three, when I say you three, I'm talking about dad. And really, I could add mom and Amber into that, too. It's, none of it is possible without you guys. I mean, Jake or dad was the well, actually, grandpa was the pioneer in the pole vaulting. But dad was the real I mean, dude's jumping in his backyard with a tin can in the ground and a jumping onto mattresses and tires and you know True. then jake goes and wins wins the state championship josh goes wins the state championship if none of that was done before me i wouldn't have known what to do and what not to do and you guys have been an open book to me and you know josh was waking me up at 7 30 every morning jake was continuing to pr provide me opportunities with rise athletic club and stuff like that so there's a lot of things that could have gone a lot worse for me but thanks to you guys it hasn't gone that way Heck, heck yeah, yeah, man. You're a heck of a dude. We love you. And um, yeah, awesome having you on. And uh, this is One More Jump Podcast. Catch you guys on the flip flop later.